My recommendation is that almost any organization strive to achieve layer two connectivity. The only reason I say that is when I'm looking at it from a long-term support issue. Layer two provides you the most plug and play capability as far as being able to send out your installers, roll out with the CPE equipment, get it out of the network and have it managed. If your network has been designed to support layer two or carrier ethernet, you will have the most flexibility and scalability as far as growing your network. So I just want to go a little bit over the building blocks of carrier ethernet. So, you know, we talked about uh, routing. Routing is really, you know, was used for, for local area networks, then was added into wide area networks. Carrier ethernet is really the, uh, the carrier's way, whether it's, you know, like the, the T-Mobiles and the AT&Ts of this world, got together with the uh, the Metro Ethernet forum that started to put the things together, white papers and standards. A way to use Ethernet as a true backbone for transporting traffic. And it was built between the building blocks for carrier Ethernet really was a standardized service. So if you're, you know, uh, with ABC and you're reselling services to uh, AT&T or wherever, there's going to be certain terminologies and a way to transfer the information from one network to the other, and that's been uh, documented. Scalability. Right? So, you know, we talked a lot about breaking up into smaller networks and so forth, and that works well. But when you get to a certain point where you have all these smaller networks to manage, it can become difficult again. So we're looking at a way to really have less of these networks to manage and having a clear path between them that is that has separation as well. We'll, we'll go into that as well. Quality of service, right? So, uh, you know, I've been talking with many people here. Uh, very difficult to put in quality of service uh, if you have different vendors and so forth. Uh, the layer two Ethernet world, uh, carrier Ethernet, has been, you know, there's documents, there's white papers of what's a regulator, what's a shaper, what's a CIR, what's an EIR, how you set the priorities, what methods are used. So, you know, it's, 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 there, there's, the quality of service is well defined on how it's to be done. Service management, right? So you have box from ABC company, box from XYZ company, and so forth. You want to know what's your delay for these services, what's your packet loss ratios, and so forth like that. These standards have been done as well, and they've been put together using standards like Y1731 that will provide uh, statistics in a generic fashion, no matter what hardware you use. Reliability. Uh, this is another important factor. When we're talking about carrier Ethernet gear, you know, we have to have very low MTBS. We have to have, you know, be able to deliver five nine services. So we have to have very low latency in the device. It has to be able to forward data any packet size up to the line rate. So, you know, you're doing things in FPGA. CPUs are not used usually in carry Ethernet to forward traffic. All that's done at the hardware. So as you scale and as you guys grow and you're delivering more phone services and uh, business type services, these things will become important. So the basic connectivity options, right? So when it comes to connecting point A to point B and so forth, there are three basic ones, E-Line, e E-LAN, and E-Tree. And I have some slides that kind of explain what they are. Um, so we have three uh, you know, really clearly defined uh, ways of delivering the services. Uh, the setup and so forth is, is usually quite simple. And, 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 you know, the choice of carriers worldwide, this type of technology. So I, I don't want to harp on that too much, but really, you know, it's important to know this solution has worked for other companies in the past, so it's, it's something definitely worth looking at. Uh, next slide, please, Mr. Sutton. So this is something that I'm faced with quite often, is, you know, we're using VLANs to transport traffic. And then, you know, I, I myself, I have a few gray hairs, I've been around for a while, and when we think of a VLAN, we think of a switch that has three ports that are in one VLAN, three ports that are on another VLAN, and these two can't talk to each other, and I've created a virtual LAN for my two departments and so forth. But when we talk about carrier Ethernet VLANs, we're looking at a way to map traffic from one point to the other. So that's what we're representing over here. It's a VLAN ID is a number that's put on this in, in, in the Ethernet packet, and you can have two of them. You can do what's called Q and Q, two VLAN IDs, one for your customer and one for the service provider. And this is what's used to map the traffic through the network. Much like a, uh, an IP address would be used to what's your source and destination, 
the, the VLAN ID is a number that actually represents, uh, that's put on there to use for forwarding the traffic. So the most basic type of service that we'll offer with Tarry Ethernet is an E-line service. It's a point-to-point -point service. The traffic comes in on one port, one device. It has a, a VLAN ID, and that VLAN ID is used to map it to the other end, and it comes out the other port. So the most basic type of service, everything is, is carried on that EBC. It's not going to different areas. Next one, please. So the other option we have is the ELAN. So this is to support an application where you'd be looking like you want to have, a, you sold something to a company, and they will have three offices, and they like to have everything like being on one large local area network. An ELAN service could be used for that. And for them, it would be extremely transparent. It's as if they were in the same building. But once again, that ELAN is only between them. The eTree, this is a very popular uh, uh, service that's being used by, by uh, some larger companies to deliver internet services. And the difference with the eTree is we have a route, which would be you know, where the, the main uh, ISP or your fiber drop would be. And the remote would be a leaf. And the thing with the leaf is the leaf can only talk to the route. He cannot talk to the other remote areas. There's no path between remote to remote to remote, only from the remote to the root location. So this gives the, uh, the, uh, you know, the separation between the remote uh, 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 units and you know, a direct path to the central location. And the other option that's available with the equipment that's out there today is you can actually have multiple services using a single user network interface. So on the same physical port of your equipment, you could have one point-to-point -point EBC, which could be like a, you know, your central location over here and, and, a, and a disaster recovery site or a backup site over here. And you can also have ELAN services off the same physical port. So it gives you, you know, the options to do different types of connectivity. So why, why use Layer 2? Now, if we think back, you know, when I, when I was here at Animal Farm and, and other things, people say, well, why would you use Layer 2, you know? We've got these loops and spanning tree and all these problems. What's well, important to know, and, and, and I know you guys are busy, everybody's out working, and there's so much to get done in a day, there's only so many hours, but Layer 2 has evolved. You know, things that have, have come into Layer 2, which are really worth looking at as, as you build and think of the future of your network. Uh, standards like G8032, which is a, an Ethernet ring, and some of you, I know, have a few gray hairs like myself, you remember the days of Sonic and SDH, some of the most reliable networks in the world, very scalable, uh, fully redundant, uh, you know, self-healing. This type of technology now has now been brought into the carrier Ethernet world and can really, really, you know, increase the stability. You can take a, you know, maybe a 3.9 network and bring it up to a 4 or 5.9 just by adding this type of technology. 8031, the same thing but in a linear application. Uh, Y1731, this is a standard that's been, you know, uh, picking up speed over the past uh, three, four years. And this is what we're using for continuity checks. So if you have point A over here and point Z at over here, and you have all sorts of gear in the middle, well, you know, you may have physical ports that are up, data is going back and forth. You think the link is, link is up, but Y1731 will actually do a continuity check from end to end. So you'll know if that link goes down because the continuity is not there, once, and that's what really counts. It also gives you information regarding uh, delay measurement. Uh, packet loss. So all, all these standards uh, are there now. And you know they're interoperable in different gear, so it makes a big difference. Uh, PBB, believe it or not, the <coughs> provider backbone bridging, I've visited WISP that are using this. And they're using gear like uh, Cyan. I've seen people using gear uh, by uh, Tell Labs. So you know this equipment is coming into the WISP, the WISP environment. And it's, it's just something that's worth looking at. As the carrier grade equipment, you know, competition is hard, it is, it's very high there as well. Prices of this equipment is coming down. You, know, you don't have to, it's not just the big, big companies that are using that now. Um, also, there's a large uh, vibrant community with many groups. You know, I know on, on the, uh, myself, I like to look at, at forums and, and what's going on in different papers. I don't have, always have time to go to a conference. I don't have time to go to all the training courses sometimes. So there's a lot of information out there. You can just go to the, uh, to the MEF website, and there's white papers on defining all the different standards. There's what equipment is, man is manufactured that's been approved and so forth. So there's 
lot of good information out there. There was another uh, carrier Ethernet group that had a lot of interesting discussions about new technologies and so forth. So there's a lot of good information out there that you can get for, for free. Uh, proven scalability in major carrier networks. Uh, all I can say is uh, I, I work for performant networks. Uh, we're, we're using this type of technology. But I've been working in carrier Ethernet for almost uh, 10 years now. Uh, and, and really, the uh, I worked before that in Sonus at XDH, and X25 had been around a lot. And, and really, it, it's been in the past three, four years that carrier Ethernet has really getting tighter and tighter, and really being able to to replace the traditional TDM <coughs> services that were there for so long, with regarding the the, uh, the stability of the service. A simpler way to build and scale networks. 